still a, an ongoing discussion. So these are the two main areas, the, the two main things I have in mind. I don't know if you have others. <clears throat> I, I don't. I just uh, want to let everyone know that I started the recording. Good. Okay, so we have two options here. One will be starting by discussing a little bit if someone is interested on it about the issue regarding to joining all the different GitHub issue trackers to a single one. I don't know if the discussion is finished or someone wants to mention anything about it. So since I I started the conversation, I can um, I can say something about it and let me find the um, the issue that I'm referring to. So everyone is on the same page. So um, copy link location here it is. So it's issue two hundred eighty four in the Grimoire Lab. Repository, and the the observation I made is that currently we have issues about the different Grimoire Lab components in different issue trackers, and we're moving issues back and forth. And when people look for issues, they don't know where to look unless they're really deep in the development of Grimoire Lab. But if anyone comes new to the project, they are confused where to open the issue. They're confused uh, about where to search for issues. And the it, it's just hard managing the issues as someone who's not, who doesn't have the mental model of which repository has which information in it. And so the proposal is to have all issues in one place so that you only go to one location, and if you search, you know you're searching all of Grimoire Lab, not just small individual components. And then to be able to see all of the issues related to one component, we can use tags as a way to filter. And that way you still get to see all issues related to one component by filtering by the label or by the tag. Um, but for someone coming new to Grimoire Lab or just looking for an information, they will find it across all components in one place. So I think that would simplify how we manage issues. I think it simplifies how we can build an engagement with community members without losing, without losing anything. And now, I know Valerio especially has some other ideas on keeping issues separate. And I'm having, a, I'm, to be honest, I'm having a hard time understanding the rationale behind that. Um, but, but that's just me. Maybe I'm overlooking something because I'm not a maintainer here. It's just my outside perspective. So that's the proposal to combine all issues in one location. I'll stop here. Okay, so my question is, this discussion is still open? I mean, uh, is there any decision on this or we are still discussing about the best solution? So I'm asking we, because, oh, sorry. Well, the, we are so still open and I think we've exchanged our points of view and there has not been any new piece of information. So Valerio had suggested that we, um, oh, I see there have been more comments since I last read. So I, I'm not up to speed. 
have to read what new comments there were. So uh, we summarize the, the two proposals and as Georg didn't find any, any rationale to keep supporting the, the way that we are, the, so how we are doing it now, which is the second proposal on, on, the, on that post. And I agree with all the things that Georg said. So, uh, but uh, Valerio was saying that uh, he agrees with that and the only thing is we need to define a, a plan. So my idea is to probably start with the new reporting system in March 1st, move all the tickets to the, to the main repository, close the issue tracking in the rest of the repositories and create the, the tags. We also need to not, notify that so we can post, uh, post a, a message in the mailing list and everywhere else. So for new issues, we should wait for the tags to start creating them in the single, let's say, parent repository. Well, you can still keep in, you can still open in issues, you know, whatever you need. So, but we are going to move them from one place to another when. when yeah, yeah. I, I, I meant just, we don't need to create the, or, or rather say, we shouldn't create the issues in Remore Lab, uh, at least uh, before having the tags ready to to tag those issues, because maybe we, for the tags, can we just use the name of the repository that it belongs to? Yeah, that's another option. So, see, yeah, for sure. So you can still you can do it now. I I don't know what it is, but I don't have any problem with that. Okay, it's just to know if doing something or a different one could save uh, further work later. So yeah. just let us know if it's better creating the issues here or there. Okay. Okay. So Valerio, if you don't have anything else to add to this conversation, I think we could start with the use case we proposed yesterday for, for this meeting, which is based on adding some out of the box information to, to an index in, in Grimoire Lab, and then building visualizations on top of these information, just to show that it's easy to add new information there and you can start creating visualization on top of that, even if that's not a standard, let's say Grimoire Lab data. Uh, I, anything to add to the discussion uh, about the issue tracker? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, we have kind of an agreement in the, there in the, in the tissue. So, I mean, I agree with the plan, just uh, we have to define the steps. Uh, with respect to this, uh, uh, to what we said yesterday about adding uh, new visualizations with uh, this extra data, uh, I mean, I, I can give some context. So, um, as part of an, uh, an European project uh, that is called Crossminer, um, partners there have developed several tools. And one of these tools is uh, in charge of deriving uh, uh, sentiment and emotion from uh, text. So, has been defined as a, as a service. So, you can just send the text and you, can, and you get back uh, uh, labels that can be in terms of sentiment, so positive, uh, negative or neutral, and then emotions. Uh, we have like uh, hunger, fear, sadness, uh, love and happiness or, or something like this. So um, yesterday we added uh, this information to 
every comment uh, we have uh, in uh, in GitHub. I mean, the data that we have in uh, in the public instance of uh, Chaos. Uh, I mean, with the data from Chaos. So the idea of this uh, of, of um, this session today is just to see that we can create uh, simple visualizations uh, with this new data, combining what we already have. So comments and uh, other information and so on. Alberto, do you want to add something? Mm, no, maybe you could add some background about uh, why we are interested in this particular information, just to let others know that this comes from a project in which we need to add this information, but this information is not in, in Grimoire Lab, so Valerio needed to create this, uh, not a study, but uh, richer to uh, add the information about sentiment to the GitHub index and create the, the visualizations for, for this data. So this is basically the use case. In Grimoire Lab, we had some, some data about GitHub. All that uh, this data is interested for a lot of things, but specifically, specifically for this use case, we needed to add a sentiment analysis. In Grimoire Lab, you know, we don't have any sentiment analysis uh, tools. So we needed to go for external tools to get that information as well as explain it. So we got that information from there and we put the information directly in the indexes. There is no much more magic there. And from there, we are going to work on Analyzing, analyzing the data and building visualizations just to to show how to do it and how to work with the new index for GitHub comments that I think it's also interesting, even if this, from the point of view of, of this data that, as I said, is not standard remote lab data. So Valeria, I don't know if you want to search your screen and maybe just show in these new fields and then I could add something about the painless field we we prepared for for this to get some more interesting visualizations uh, okay yes uh, one second uh, just Okay, I, I guess you see my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, we go to the discover. Let's take it some time. Okay. Uh, we select uh, this uh, one of these two indexes, the tap to issues and the tap to pull request that uh, as Alberto mentioned. Uh, these are part of uh, uh, the, this contains the data about uh, uh, GitHub comments. So yesterday I added this extra field uh, about sentiment and emotion. So as soon as the index is loaded, yes. So basically we have uh, these four fields plus one that added the uh, Alberto. Uh, so we have uh, uh, feeling emotion is uh, the emotion about uh, um, uh, some data, I mean, some text. The sentiment uh, is the sentiment about some text. And then we have uh, a Boolean value telling us if uh, the text has been already processed to a derived emotion, etc. So if we go, for instance, here, we have the text. Okay. Um, here we can uh, we are basically inspecting the content of the index, and we can see uh, uh, that we have uh, okay unclassified values in this case. 
so for instance fixed with uh, uh, 291 is unknown we don't have value and then we have uh, uh, other uh, other text uh, that is marked as uh, uh, anger or as uh, log. Uh, so the the classification may be wrong. We we consider this tool as a, a black box, uh, and uh, this is also good for us to understand uh, how good could be uh, to use this tool uh, that has been developed in uh, in uh, in Crossminer in this European project. Uh, and I guess this is we can do the same for uh, uh, GitHub pull request. So the approach is the same. We will have always uh, these fields, and uh, so we can re uh, relate uh, uh, text and uh, and uh, and sentiment and emotion. I don't know, Alberto, if you want to, to take over or we use uh, the screen. I don't know. Yeah, if you want, you can go to the configuration to the index pattern, and I can talk about the the field I created. So in GitHub issues, yes, the scripted fields, and please edit the the field because reading the code there is a bit horrible. So click on the pencil there, yeah. And if you can expand the text box, yeah. So what, what I did was something that should be easy to do for any other field. And it's just to, to let you know how to use Painless to get some images on, on your dashboard. So if you are planning to build a dashboard in which some images could be included from some text, this could be the way. In a Slack, we have something similar, but in that case, we take the original picture from Slack. So uh, the field we have is directly the link. In this case, we have a string. And what we do here in, in Painless, which is pretty similar to Java code, is just uh, in the first line, we check we have the, the field, and the field has some value. And from there, we check if that field contains any of the words we are using for classifying sentiment. And depending on the word, we just return the, a different PNG image with the emoticon. I took them from Wikimedia, so if you use this in a dashboard, you should give credit to Wikimedia, Wikimedia with the corresponding license. I think these icons are Apache, but I'm not sure. And uh, as I said, it's it's simple to do and it can be used for other different dashboards in which you may want to show images depending on some specific text. Um, well, Anyway, if you want to, to build something like this, just ask me or ask uh, any of my workmates in, in the More Lab mailing list or, or in the channel, in the IRC channel, I mean, so we can help you to build this kind of fields that sometimes are interesting to add some color to, to the dashboard. And well, that's all on my side, Valerio. So if you want to start building some visualizations or trying to explain what you may want to build for, for the dashboard. Uh, OK. Uh, so I just have a quick question. For your sentiment analysis, you base on the text that you analyze on that particular block or you try to look the entire meaning of the conversation uh, I mean, the, if i understand correctly just uh, just the text of the single comment so the text uh, uh, is sent to, to like a pipeline so in the first uh, step uh, the text is uh, uh, 
converts it to plain text, then uh, um, it passes through a code detection, so the parts related to code are, uh, are removed. And then once we are there, uh, we apply the classification about sentiment and emotion. Does it answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, Alberto, if you want, we can show uh, the, the GitHub uh, to dashboard. I mean, the dashboard that, that uh, uh, uses this, um, this, this, this indexes. Yeah, and we can we can start there because, well, I think, but you can have a different opinion. And when I say you, I mean everyone or anyone in the call. Uh, we can use the GitHub issues comments and collaboration dashboard as a mock-up of the dashboard we want to build for for sentiment. Not everything here makes sense for sentiment, but I think most of the visualizations, in particular the tables, could work. So uh, I don't know if you have time to uh, have a look to this dashboard, but basically here we have issues, comments, and reactions. And the, the idea is for each comment or each issue, having the collaboration among different persons. So we have this network graph on the right hand side in which each node is a person, a different person, a user. And then each edge in this case represents that they are collaborating in the same issue. So, well, that means that, for instance, the, the bigger node is the person which more comments in this particular time frame for the repositories we are analyzing, and all the edits, in this case, he has uh, to other different users are the collaborations they they have so in this case we have girl link twice because the identity is probably not merged so thanks for pointing that valerio <laughs> <laughs> i'm just too popular yeah and well i don't know the, the time period that is set right now can you show it 90 yeah, days 90 days perfect so i keep it like so this is the collaboration graph uh, we have for Grimoire Lab. And this is something that could be interesting to analyze how the project evolves, because probably the graph we have two years ago is pretty different to, to this one. Here we have Valerio and Georg and Kevin that are actively collaborating, but probably two years ago, there were other people there. So, well, in this case, we are looking to the last two years, so it's going to be different, but not so different because we are going to have still all the information from the last six months, the last year. So well, this is kind of a mess because we have all the activity in, during, during two years, but if you select a specific period, for instance, I don't know, 2008 or 2017, something like that, something specific. Yeah, maybe, yes, that one. So, uh, like this? Yeah, something like this, just to have a, a different time period to show how the community is different from one period to another. Or it should be, because maybe it's not. So if you can zoom in the nodes to see who is there, we have that Jesus were, was uh, a lot more active in the past in the community, or at least compared to the rest of the community, because this is 
always relative to the others. And girl, he's still there, but not so big, <laughs> maybe. And well, John is also there. Well, that that's the idea of this of this graph. So you can analyze the evolution of the community from time to time. And then the tables provides information at different levels of granularity by projects, repositories, or individuals. So you can see which project is more active, or has more comments. We try to use the reactions as a measure of the impact of the, the, the comments. We use also the ratio because, well, uh, more of comments, more of the comments uh, don't have any reaction at all. So with the ratio, you can compare how many positive reactions, in this case, plus one, the comments have uh, related to the total numbers of reactions we have for that project or that repository or, or whatever. So this is the, the use case. And now from this, the idea should be trying to build something similar, but with sentiment, with data about sentiment. Of course, the collaboration graph makes no sense, or at least I don't know how we could use a graph like this with sentiment. Maybe any of you have any idea about it. And for the tables, uh, I'm open to to any suggestions. Probably Valerio is the one who, who has a, an idea about what he wants, but if any of you have a, a different idea or just an idea because we didn't explain anything <laughs> at all, please feel free to, to propose visualization for this. I think the visualization is great. But sometimes it's hard to see the connections between, even though I know the purpose is just to show it the way it is, but sometimes if we can have a kind of directed uh, graph, like the people are con contributing more, like how much the traffic is flowing, is it inwardly? For example, the bigger nodes. I think those are the contributors from what you explained, right? Um, so the edges, the edges represents yeah, the, the, the traffic of uh, activity. Yeah, the edges are the number of contributions they serve in the same issue. So, I mean, if you have an edge, that means those two contributors participated in the same issue or in the same issues, in a number of, of issues they have in common. Mm -hmm. And the edge, the size, the size of the edge represents the number of shared contributions they have. As there are a lot of uh, information okay. in the graph, the problem is that probably the numbers are saturated, yeah. and you cannot see the difference between one edge or another. Mm -hmm. and another. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if we make the issue? the size of the issue to be the nodes? Well, because the nodes are the users to be able to represent the collaboration. So we cannot set the size to the issue because they are not represented by the nodes. I mean, it's not something, it's not a property of a new, uh, a user. A user has a number of contributions, uh, a number of um, reactions, a yeah. number of assignees or whatever, but not uh, the number of shared uh, comments with other users because that is external information. It's not something we can okay. have from the node. Okay. So, uh, Valeria, I think next step should be starting building visualizations. I don't know if you have an idea of any visualization you would like to have for the dashboard. Maybe we can just start with something simple. So we can add uh, just a table at the end. So for every 
author. Uh, we can have like uh, the number of uh, uh, positive messages and negative ones. We can start like this. Yeah, something like that. Or maybe we can start with something more generic like a donut uh, with uh, just uh, showing uh, the, I mean, the oral view about sentiment, emotion about on, on the chaos repositories. And I don't know. Well, let's start with the donut because probably it's easier and more visual to get an idea of the data we have. And let's decide later if we have any visualization that could be preferred over the others, depending on the data we have. Okay. We start with the uh, emotion. So this is uh, the simplest uh, donut, I guess. And then maybe the, uh, okay. Okay. Not sure if, it, if this is useful, but in theory. Uh, so for the feeling uh, for love, we have uh, uh, actually maybe this can be good to test the uh, uh, can be good to test uh, the accuracy of the of the tool because uh, for for the motion log uh, we have uh, um, text that has been classified as uh, positive and as neutral and then as negative so this maybe is uh, this part maybe is, there is a uh, I mean should be checked maybe we can uh, remove uh, the unknown or maybe we can just have two different donors I don't know what do you think uh, Alberto well either I'd ask the rest of the people here what they sold is uh, more clear. Okay, so do whatever you want. <laughs> I'd say d depending on the interest you have or users may have in in the second donut, you can remove it or not. I mean, well, it's interesting to know that love has almost the same positive feeling than negative and neutral, but I don't know the meaning of that. So yeah. I can't say if that is adding some value or not. Yeah, you can just keep it very simple for the moment. Yeah, that's probably better. Okay. Uh, so it seems there is a lot of love and anger in chaos and some sadness. Not a lot of joy. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe we can do it. Uh, we can try to create a table per, uh, per repository. Yeah, sa save this visualization first so you don't have to redo it later uh, then I will remove it I will not leave the, the instance of the thing yeah so the idea here is for instance if you click in one project, for instance, Grimoire Lab, as we are in the Grimoire Lab code, now the pie chart should offer 
the view of the sentiment for Grimoire Lab. But if you now remove the filter and filter by another project, maybe yogurt, I don't know. Or obviously have a lot of danger there. So <laughs> well probably the sentiment analysis as you may know is not accurate and with this very specific text we have in in issues is not going to have Maybe reliable can, results but we can use it for be, uh, <laughs> if it work it it would be interesting to have something like this to analyze the different maybe, projects. Maybe we can focus on a project that, that doesn't have code. Because maybe, I mean, since yeah. uh, we're talking about code, you may have like uh, something not or uh, exception or error. Maybe we can focus on a, a project that shouldn't, shouldn't include any code. I don't know. Maybe the website, or or metrics. Which one you think could be a good candidate for? Or any working group. The working groups should have issues with discussions. So well. Okay. And the results seems like more or less the same. I mean, but anyway, as I said, I'm not confident on sentiment analysis as something reliable, at least with this very specific test, unless uh, the the tools used to classify it were specifically trained and evaluated for for this context. But the idea is the same is, well, if you want sentiment, this will be a possible use case, a doable use case in which you could, by clicking on projects or repositories, uh, analyze the, the results of, of the, this sentiment analysis. Sorry for being redundant on this. And now, well, uh, with the data table, we can see how to use these fields, maybe you can build a table from the point of view of the of the sentiment just to see the icons working. Uh, okay, so maybe I will need some guidance here. So it's this one now. Okay. So what we can add uh, maybe uh can add the authors, maybe. Well, it's not three. Uh, not really a good visualization this one. You can change the order of the buckets. Yeah. So in this case, you are ordering by the most active authors in this case. So most of your messages are unknown. You can remove unknown as you did before. Yes, I'll take Yeah, no, I, I was going to say that this is doing uh, the, this is bucketizing by author, but you could bucketize by project or repository or whatever to get the, 
a similar, the similar, a similar data as we saw it in the dashboard in a single table and analyze the, the sentiment of the different, let's say, units, because they can be projects, individuals, or, or whatever. And in this case, instead of using just a string, well, you can use an icon. And for me, this is interesting to let you know that you can use this approach for building tables when you have a limited number of, of values. And you can use something else, uh, not only text, I mean. So, well, just another option you, you have there to, to build as well. And from the point of view of the dashboard we have, Valerio, I don't know if you want to have tables to compare something specific, I mean projects or, or whatever, or you may want some numbers, or maybe you could uh, be interested on building a heat map or, or something to show the data. Because maybe, I'm not sure of the scope of the dashboard. Uh, I would say, I mean, uh, I would avoid to uh, to analyze uh, single users since uh, the results are not uh, may may could be not accurate. Maybe I would just focus on the analysis on on projects or uh, repositories, and okay. uh, maybe we could just use uh, uh, these together with uh, the the reactions. So, well, one one thing we could do to show how to do it, because it can be applied to other different dashboards, it's not related exclusively with sentiment, is trying to group the labels in positive and negative, or something like that, for instance. I mean, counting all the sentiment related to love, joy, and surprise as, as positive, and then fear, sadness and anger as negative. So instead of showing six columns in a table, you could show only a couple of columns, one for positive and one for negative. That could be something interesting to, to show because it's uh, not really difficult to do it, but is something advanced when you build visualization and probably some people don't know how, how to do it. So if you create a table, we can try to do that and so how to use uh, not so common metrics to, to achieve this goal. Okay, so I create a table, this one. Yeah, a, a table. Then what you have to do is bucketize the table as you may want. I don't know if project or repository is better for your use case. I know users are not. They yeah, I guess. I mean, since the results are not uh, accurate, it's better to, to avoid, avoid it. Okay, let's say by origin, that is basically the repository. Yeah, so what you may want to do now is adding a new metric. and select the, um, uh, the zoom bucket, zoom bucket there. And now instead of the histogram, you can select filters and you can write a specific filters there. For instance, the name of the field you are interested in, which is uh, Feeling emotion, yeah. And colon, and now the values you are interested in. In this case, you could write, yes, asterisk, sadness, and now space. Well, it, it's not needed, it can be simple. Yeah, as, as a different filter, yeah. And copy the thing, yeah. Well, sadness and love, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> could have been uh, different. Uh, the other one was yeah anger uh, anger yes 
And the last one was which one? Uh, the issue price or the no. I don't know. Sad messenger and I don't remember. This third one. Uh, wait, yeah. Okay, maybe we can have just two. Let me see here there is okay, we have anger, sadness, fear, 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 fear yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now you have the metric below, which is account. And yes. what you are doing there is counting the results of filtering sadness, anger, and fear elements. So you have in a single column the aggregation of these three emotions. You can replicate this in another metric and use the the other three, which is joy and so on. Mm -hmm. Not adding a filter, but adding a new metric. Okay. You can collapse this one, yes, and add a new one. And by doing the same, uh, it was uh, and bucket. Yes. And here we Filters, filters. Yeah, filters in plural, yeah. Yeah, and here we have the. Okay, yeah, so it's. Yeah. Uh, surprise and. Surprise and joy. So now you can change the label below at the end of the, yeah, the other one below. Ah, yeah. And positive. Uh, yeah. Positive emotion or something like that. Okay. The same here. Negative. So this is a way of grouping things. We are using this for positive and negative emotions, but it can be used could be used for other things like different sets of reactions in this case, or just by uh, for counting merged pull requests or whatever you may need inside of a metric which is not a simple count or aggregation like a maximum or minimum or a sum of, of a number can be done with with this kind of, of aggregation are, are really useful when you need to create activity metrics because activity sometimes need a bit more than a single count because you need some kind of filtering to count things only if a particular thing happens that's the idea and i hope this is useful for for you and i think we are running out of time so i don't know if you have any questions uh, just a, a quick question are you running uh, Kibana on the uh, front end? Yes, this is Kibana. Well, it's Kibiter, but it's Kibana. Okay, okay. And the Elasticsearch also at the back end? Yeah. Okay. It's Kibana on top of Elasticsearch. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. I was asking because, uh, like, in my university, we are doing a work with Kibana and the uh, elastic surges kind of thing. So we can use this platform to experiment with. We have a course that we are teaching that we use a, a lot of uh, this technique with Kibana and elastic search. So if it is possible for students as well to be familiar with the install and play, I don't know how uh, that can well, be. 
that question is probably more for, for, for Valerio. But basically, this is Grimoire Lab. You can install Grimoire Lab and start working with the data you may want. There are okay. also other options, but if you want to play with, with Grimoire Lab data, the best one probably is installing Grimoire Lab so you have access to all the different data sources. You can get all the data, the data you may want, and you can start playing by, by this. There is some documentation about this, so we can share it with you if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Very much interested. And I, I, I remember the previous uh, tutorials that you gave, they are all recorded, right? Yeah, all the, all the calls are recorded. And okay. apart from the calls, we have some specific documentation. documentation yeah. How to that, that would really be helpful because they started in this semester and I think they will, it will be helpful for us, yeah. Okay, so maybe, I don't know if it's enough for you if we share the pointers to the documentation in the notes of the talk or, or you prefer yes. yeah, you can. an email to the mail. Perfect, email. yeah. Any way that, we, yeah, I'm open. I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. Are you asking this because you want to 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 uh, explore the data related to comets? You know, to comets, data pieces, and so on. I mean, do do you want to play with the data, the Grimoire Lab, the Grimoire Lab tools gather, or are you interested in the platform uh, which is being used by Grimoire Lab? Uh, you mean for the question I ask? Okay, the thing is that, like this course, uh, it's a course at the university that is um, teaching students like on quality testing. So they are present currently, they are using uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana. Mm -hmm. But now uh, some of them like are very new to this uh, kind of thing. I just recall to me that uh, you guys were giving a very rich tutorial and documentations that I think who may prefer, I may prefer to suggest Grimola, which is really like a, a complete package. But I do not know how much of the modules are accessible to the general public so that, you know, it's like the university. So they yeah. could now exploit different modules and things like that. Perfect. Uh, I understand what you mean. In any case, if you are also interested in the platform, uh, uh, we, you should also pay attention to Open Risto, which is the uh, last search plus some tools uh, done by the Amazon, the Amazon uh, staff, and they okay. are the tools are published under Apache license too, I think. Okay. And it also has some features about security and, and so on. The ones that are uh, covered in in the XPath for Elastic, which is proprietary, but in the uh, for for open so everything is, or at least they say it is open source. Okay. Yeah, that would really make sense. Okay, so I think this is all for today because we are almost on time for the next meeting. So thank you all for being here. Hope you enjoyed the call today and hope to see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.